Welcome back to Seton Hill University. Joining us right now, we have uh, Sally Bosco, uh, who is an author, and you write young adult dark fiction. Fiction, right. okay. Some paranormal romance. Very good. And also with us, Heidi. We have Lee Allen Howard, who is a local Pittsburgh writer. Um, both are alum of the program. And uh, Lee also is an editor. So we have always a great mix here at Seton Hill because everyone, once they get through the program, then they're able to do everything. <laughs> and Lee, you write what type of, uh, what type, what type of books? Primarily horror and uh, supernatural crime and uh, dark fantasy. Okay, so let's talk, uh, Sally, about your your most recent work. What what do you have that's come out recently? Uh, well, my most recent book is uh, the Weirdcat Chronicles. It's a paranormal romance about a, a girl who grows up, and it's been kept from her that she's a weirdcat. Her parents hoped it would kind of skip a generation. Okay. So she starts having these experiences, and she has to figure out what's going on. So it's kind of a coming of age weirdcat. About what age does that? Uh, 17. 17, yeah. the age of reason for wear cats. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and Lee, your most recent work? Uh, the one that came out last month is called Death Perception. And it's a supernatural crime, supernatural thriller. And it's about a young man who works at the local funeral home and he cremates people. And he has this special gift that he discovered that he can discern the cause of death of those that he cremates by toasting marshmallows over their ashes. And when what he discerns differs from what's on the death certificate, then he finds out that he's in the midst of murderers and he has to, you know, avenge the dead and save the living. Do you see this as a series? Um, I've been told that it's been set up for a uh, follow-up, and I agree. I think it could, but I haven't planned one yet. I don't know, that sounds like almost like a perfect setup it's, for yeah, a series. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I can see it on TV. It could stand alone well, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could, but you know that everybody... If, they want to know yes. what else. If, if he, you know, he has that knack, they're oh, going to yeah. want to see that character again There'll and again. There'll be a murder mystery in every one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, where do you both kind of pull inspiration from? Were you a reader, readers all your lives? I have been a reader all my life, yeah. But I think when you start writing, those ideas just come to you. It's getting the time to write the books, that's the problem. So I have <laughs> exactly. tons of ideas. Do you have the luxury of being a full-time writer? Or? I am a full-time writer now, yes I am. Mm -hmm. And Lee, how about you? Uh, my inspiration, uh, probably from horror stories and Tom Tryon, uh, his novel The Other really electrified me when I was young, I don't know, 12, 13, 14. And he's probably responsible for making me want to write. So, and I'm also employed as a writer in the software industry. Now, uh, you know, you, you both have uh, more than one book out, or is yes. this not a first book for either of you? No, it wasn't actually, no. What are some of your previous well, books? Well, I have one called um, Alt Death, about a, an inter, uh, internet vampire. It's kind of a horror mystery about a group of kids in the northern neck of Virginia that they're, one of their friends, um, supposedly commit suicide, but they know it's something else, so they have to kind of mm -hmm. prove that it's something dark forces at work. So it's and a mystery element. It's, there's a mystery element, and also Shadow Cat, which was an adult paranormal, and that was um, published under the name Zoe Lepage, because I wanted to keep my adult and young adult wow. separate. So another, a different kind of weird cat. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have it. Yeah. Do you like cats? Do you have a cat? I have cats. Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Lee, your other works? Uh, my previous novel is called The Sixth Seed. It's kind of dark science fiction. I call it family drama with aliens. And it's about um, a family who they think they're done having children because they already have five. And then a sixth one comes along because um, a doctor in league of an alien race has implanted a hybrid human alien seed in within the father and so um, she gets pregnant again and brings forth the first alien human hybrid that has come to full term in in utero 
And you can see the problems that would arise with that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually why I was so silent for a moment, because I was thinking of those. Oh, because right. he, he, he has a little one on the way. Yeah. Does he have? So. <laughs> yeah. I was really trying to digest all that at the same time. Uh, you know, both of you are, are established alum of the program, have a few books under your belt. I want to talk a little bit maybe about your individual early days of writing. I know there can be kind of a struggle before you, you get to get your work out there, and there, there's some frustration maybe that goes along with that. Why don't you share uh, did, did your... Did you your... both write before you came to Oh, yeah, home? yeah. Yes. Well, I've written for years, and I know um, my first, the first improvements I made were through joining a writer's group. So that really helped, and I, I wrote, and I, I've written so many novels and, and tried to get them published, and, but they were kind of like practice novels. But going to Seton Hill, I think, just really brought my level of writing up another degree. Lee, how about your journey as a writer? Well, um, I started writing when I was in second grade, and I held off that long because I didn't know how to print yet. So, so I didn't learn how to write, you know, actually make words. I wrote a story and I wrote all through grade school and high school and in college. And I tried getting things published and read a lot of books about the writing craft. And I still didn't have a lot of success getting things out there on the market. So I decided I saw the program here and I live in Pittsburgh so it's very close by and took advantage and just like Sally said, really kind of jump-started, took me up to another level. And then the community. I always talk about the fact that there is community. We all graduated in different years, yet I, I feel like I am extremely close to them um, just because Seton Hill has that strong sense of community. It almost is like this is an infomercial for Seton Hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is just how passionate everyone who has come to the program feels about it. I thought maybe at lunch, Carrie Coleman paid people off. <laughs> <laughs> say good things about the university. We don't get the money until after the interview. After, yeah. <laughs> it's after all, it airs, actually. It's right. all about the networking with writing. And it's, it's really important to have that strong network. And, because writing is such a solitary thing. And you need encouragement to keep doing it, actually. Absolutely. I, you know, I think a lot of people can appreciate reading, but it takes uh, maybe a special knowledge and almost an insider's point of view to, uh, to appreciate writing. I think, uh, although I wonder if for most people, the natural progression is from reader to writer. Now, with you, Lee, was that how it was even whenever you were real little? Or was it that the stories were just there and, like you said, you needed to get them out? Um, well, I was a precocious reader, too. And was always reading something and um, I think one of my favorite books when I was very little was How to Feed and Care for Your Monster by, uh, I can't remember who the <laughs> author is, but he wrote the Clifford books mm -hmm. and uh, so, but I, you know, did write my little stories on tablet paper or three right. ring notebooks and then I would bind them in with construction paper. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. What have you read recently, Sally? What have I read recently? Yes. Um, Caitlin Kiernan, The Red Tree. Oh. I really love that book. And it, it, it kind of like is House of Leaves does um, kind of weird architecture. Huh, that's, I have it on the shelf. Cellars growing, you know, to huh. infinite degrees. And it's really cool. Unreliable narrator, but it really works. Huh, that's interesting. Now I'm going to have to check it out. That's a great I book. Have it yeah. huh. Lee, are you reading anything currently? I'm always reading something currently. I have three, <laughs> four, five going, but um, uh, I'm studying, uh, rereading, and studying Dan Simmons' uh, Summer of Night. Wow. You know, taking it scene by scene and analyzing it. That's something that I like to do with a novel at least once a year. So. Yeah, Dan Simmons is a smart choice. We were just talking about this in the module that I taught yesterday how Dan Simmons can write in every genre and do it well, and that is extremely difficult. Well, it looks like we, uh, we are out of time here. They're giving me the wrap it up uh, ferociously over there. Yeah. Um, they can Google search you to find any of your works, but yes. do you have Twitter, Facebook, yes. all the social media? Yes. Uh, SallyBosco.com. It's all listed on there. And Lee? LeeAllenHoward.com, or Twitter is at LeeAllenHoward. Well, thanks for spending the past 10 minutes or so with us. We really have enjoyed you being with us. Uh, we'll be back with more here from Seton Hill University in just a moment.